Just about five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning. I've been looking forward to this next interview for a while because this is uh, a new area of stem cell understanding that I, I, I had no clue about. So what do I know about stem cells? Well, very little. First of all, I work in a radio sh- station. I do a radio show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always tell you that because, you know, if anything I claim to be an expert on, I'm not. So don't believe anything I say. But we invite experts all the time. And one of the things that I thought I knew about stem cells was that once you got to be a certain age, you know, you didn't have them anymore. Mm-hmm. Wrong. I'm wrong, right? One of the things I didn't understand about stem cells, I thought in order to benefit from them, you had to get them somewhere else, uh-huh. like an umbilical cord or, or something like that, right? Yeah, me too. Not necessarily true. Apparently, we have stem cells in us all the time. And, and I've known a couple of people who had stem cell... Um, I don't know if therapy is, is the right word, but mm-hmm. they've. Uh, Brad had his knees. Yes. Completely. I, well, I don't want to say completely, but I, th- I think he's completely better. Oh, yeah. He's 100%. If, if he's said. listening. Uh, yeah. And it was a stem cell treatment of some sort. Dr. Alan C. Somersault has some information for you that's just going to blow you away. You have stem cells in you right now, if I understand this right. Dr. Somersault has written a book called The Amazing Power of Stem Cell Nutrition. Uh, Dr. Somersault is a physician. Uh, he also practices ophthalmology, dermatology, natural health. Obviously, he's a scientist, and uh, he's going to in, enlighten us about stem cells, uh, the amazing power of stem cell nutrition, how to enhance your natural repair system today. Let's find out about this and how far this might go. I mean, where will we be in 10 years from now mm-hmm. when it comes to some of these yeah. medi- medical advancements we keep hearing about? Dr. Somersault, good morning, doctor. Good morning to you, Larry. Where are you right now? Where are you calling from? I'm actually calling from my home city, which is Toronto, Canada. Oh, my goodness. I've been to Toronto. I loved it there. How, how, how's, the weather? how's the weather? It's pre- Today it's beautiful. We had rain overnight, which sort of made everything verdant green, and now the sun is up, and it's just marvelous. Oh, wow. So we have... time of year to Canada. So am I right in what I said in the intro? We have stem cells in us no matter how old we are? Of course, and the big, the big challenge, I guess, is that this information uh, has, not, has been held because the media has not paid any attention to this at all. The media got caught up on this embryonic stem cell. Business. Yeah, yeah. Because that's when we first discovered stem cells from, you know, isolating them from human embryos. And, of course, that raised a whole lot of uh, issues about abortion and right. right to life and all that stuff. Right. And they went down that political arm because that's what the public likes, and I guess they feed them what they like, or I guess the public likes it because they feed it to them. I don't know. But the bottom line was that's where they paid all the attention. And then the second thing was they got some big celebrities who had serious medical conditions and so on, and they began to talk about curing these major diseases and uh, regenerative medicine, you know, rebuilding uh, spinal cords and injecting brains to make new cells to solve Parkinson's and all this other stuff. But that's really only, that's a medical aspect of stem cells. That's stem cell medicine. And there's a lot of opportunity there, and there's a lot of hope, a lot of prospects. And hundreds of labs across the world today are looking into ways to utilize stem cells in that medical way, in a therapeutic fashion. And uh, we've done this in, in, in different ways in terms of uh, bone marrow transplants and, and in chemotherapy and so on for over the years. Right, but what right. what the public does not know, and everybody needs to know, this is, is what we we're all ears. That's right. You have stem cells. In fact, we all have stem cells. Everybody uses stem cells. They use their stem cells every single day, and the stem cells work, and they work all the time, every time. Okay, so that's the basic message. Okay, so I'm going to ask a dumb question. I think I think it's a dumb question. No, no, no question is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. But okay, but I've heard that in the future. Uh, yes. d- dentists, for example, would be able to use stem cells to regrow teeth. That's right. That's where the excitement is. The excitement is in what's called regenerative medicine. And the prospect is, well, let me just tell you a little about stem cells. Okay. Stem cells okay. have the capacity to multiply almost indefinitely. In other words, when normal cells in the body multiply, as they multiply, they lose the ability to multiply. So sooner or later, they start multiplying. But stem cells are not like that. 
as they multiply, they retain the opportunity to multiply. And so they multiply sometimes 20, 30, 40 uh, times. And if you start with one and you just keep doubling, by the time you get to five, you're at 30. By the time you get to 10 times, you're at 1,000. By the time you get to you know, 20 times, you're at a million and so on. Okay. So one stem cell can give rise to millions of cells. That's the key. Second thing they do is they differentiate, which means that these stem cells, when they multiply, can then become cells of any tissue type. In fact, just think of it. The whole human body is produced starting off with one sperm and one egg. So those two primary cells, primordial cells, right. have the opportunity to multiply, and as they do, they differentiate to become blood cells, bone cells, muscle cells, and so on. Stem cells remain in the body to do that very thing, to, to provide the body with a means of reproducing all the various tissue types. Okay. You got that? Yeah. So, so the body's own normal renewal system. Now, we've only come to understand this within the past 10, 15 years. This is what I'm telling you. It's not a brand new. We used to think that the bloodline, you know, we knew this, the bloodline was formed from the progenitor cells. In other words, all the cells in your blood can be regenerated, your red cells, white cells, and so on. All the blood cells. So we thought of that very simple. Second thing, we used to use this, and we still do actually, in chemotherapy. We isolate blood from a patient before giving them chemo. Then we isolate the stem cells from the blood. And then we give them chemo, damage a lot of cells in the process, but because we've removed the stem cells, we still have them in reserve, we give them back to the patient after chemo, and those cells go on to regenerate all types of cells in the body. Oh, wow. Was, I never knew that. Old, oh, yeah, that's the old way. That's, we, that's been done for now for quite a while. Okay. What we're now able to do, and this is the beautiful thing, in medicine, I'm talking about medicine now, this is medicine. Stem cell medicine allows us to utilize stem cells almost as replacement parts, I mean, I mean, I mean, potential replacement parts. In other words, all the cells in your body that you have, the over probably 200 different tissue types, right. cells can all be produced from stem cells. So if we can take your stem cells and, in a sense, uh, train them, that's what we actually do. We're going to do today, we can actually train them. We can train them. In fact, let me give you another thing. We used to think that we had to start with stem cells. So that's where the embryos came from. Right, and right. that's where that whole thing went on. And up to today, the man in the street still thinks that that's what we're doing. Yes. We're doing nothing like that now. We don't need embryos. What we now do, guys got Nobel Prize for this a couple years ago. What we now do is this. You can take cells almost from any tissue in the body. And by manipulating a couple genes, four or five genes, we can cause cells to go backwards to become stem cells. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I got a Nobel, two guys got a Nobel Prize for that uh, two years ago. You did? Wow. So, Congratulations. Yeah, wow. Wow. Hang oh, on. Listen, oh, to this. Listen to this. Okay. Those are called induced progenitor stem cells. In other words, we induce somebody's skin cells to go backwards and become stem cells. So now we've got stem cells for this person starting with their skin cells. But these stem cells behave just like stem cells. So we can now use these stem cells to prime the pump, give them back to the patient, and have the patient use these stem cells to produce a wide variety of tissue type cells. Wow. So that's the whole point. So today, most of the research today is not on embryos. It's on what we call adult stem cells. Adult, see, another thing, people think of adult stem cells as being an adult. That's not true. Adult simply means non-embryo. In other words, after you pass the embryo stage. Okay. All the stem cells are called adult stem cells. They're not embryonic, they're adult. Okay. okay, okay. So that's one source. The second source, as I say, is to take tissue cells and program them to become what's called induced progenitor stem cells. Bottom line is we have sources of stem cells today we didn't have before. We now can do this uh, uh, medically and use these stem cells for stem cell medicine. You may give you a good, good example, particularly patients with heart disease. Recent research has shown that some heart patients, people who suffer from heart attack, right. damage their heart muscle. You could take their stem cells and inject these stem cells directly into the heart muscle. And then watch these stem cells convert to become heart muscle cells and watch those new tissues literally beating on the echocardiogram. Oh, wow. And, 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 and does we it... Could even does oh, yeah, we can even inject it into the blood and have the blood take the stem cells to the heart and watch them do the same thing. Could an could a, could a ailing heart be totally repaired? Well, you're, you're gone. No, you're stretching it. Yes, well, once you put the word totally, <laughs> you're not going to 100%. No, 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 okay, no. This okay. is all 
research. Okay. So we're at the early stages, but the ones I just, the, the, the type I just, the intervention I just mentioned is now being used in, in cardiac centers, where we're now using stem cells to help to, uh, to, to, to rebuild the heart muscle. Wow. So part of the problem we have, though, is that when the, when the heart beats, the tissue formed from the stem cells does not, in a sense, coordinate perfectly with the tissue that's inherently there. Do you understand? So we're trying to learn a little more and more about how to get that stem cell, uh, which has become heart cells, to integrate into the heart. And, and all those are challenges. And there's a lot of issues here that I'm not even mentioning it, that are big, big challenges that face uh, doctors when we think of using stem cells to re as regenerative medicine. We have the problem of rejection, for example. Same thing we had when we started tra organ transplant. Right, right, okay. Will the patient reject the stem cells? So if you take stem cells from the wrong source and inject them into a person, you get rejection. Okay. That's one issue. The other big issue is that we're injecting something that could literally sort of take off on its own, which would actually lead to cancer if you're not careful. So there's the prospect of tumor formation by injecting stem cells which don't behave like you want them to behave. They okay. misbehave okay. and then can become... Very seriously, and that's yeah. what I, that's what I, when you said about the 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 um, reproduction, the quick quick reproduction. I wondered if that might be an explanation of cancer. Well, it is not an explanation, but the, that is one way in which cancer can form. Okay. In okay. fact, let me uh, let me go on and on and on talking about this. Yeah. Women in their ovaries, for example, have eggs, and these eggs, you know, mature in the ovary. Okay. And sometimes. We see what I call what I call um, teratol teratomas in the in the ovary in surgery. You open the woman's ovary and you see all kinds of teeth. And here, where did those come from? These are the original cells differentiating to become many different kinds of tissues right inside the ovary. Oh wow! Really? Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's what that's what that's been known for a long time. But but that's uh, that's misbehaving. What the doctors want to do, what we want to do today, is to learn how to control these stem cells so that we can actually manipulate them at our convenience to do what we want them to do. Now, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want them to do. That's stem cell medicine. Now, long before we started doing that, Long before we learned what they were doing, long before we started making these interventions, nature was already using stem cells. Of course, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. It's and this is where the book. This is where the book comes into play, right? And of course, because nature does it far better than doctors do. <laughs> okay. Let me tell this to you: every physiological process in the human body, nature does infinitely better than doctors. Take anything you want. Take surgery. I'll give a simple example. When you go to surgery and the surgeon makes an incision, he cuts the skin. When he's finished, he takes staples or sutures and he holds the skin together and he staples them or he stitches them. Right. And then we sit back and we watch. We watch nature heal those two pieces of skin. Isn't that amazing? Until eventually you look and you see not even a scar. You understand? The surgeon doesn't do that. That's All the surgeon does is bring the skin together, right. sit back and wait. Yeah. That nature takes over. And so that's my point. Same thing with stem cells. We can do so much as doctors, and there's a whole great hope for a lot of therapeutic interventions, and the future is, is very bright and promising. This is probably the most active area of medical research throughout the world today. This is where the, the front, forefront of medicine is. But uh, my point is, and the whole point of the book is, long before this, from time immemorial, every human being has used their own stem cells, and we continue to do it on a daily basis. As I am speaking to you, as you are listening to me, we both have stem cells coming out of our bone marrow continuously. The stem cells go out into the bloodstream, circulate to the body, and they're triggered by tissues in need to be attracted to those tissues, migrate into the tissues. As they get there, they begin to multiply and to differentiate to become cells of that particular damaged tissue. And the tissue can be damaged because of infection, it's, uh, inflammation, uh, cancer, uh, be it the cells are worn out, whatever it is. And these cells come in to become a new uh, replacement troops, as it were, as the body continuously renews itself. So why are, some, really why are some things not healed, like a, like a severed spinal cord? Well, because there's a whole lot of things that can go wrong. Oh. Okay? And remember this. No, severed spinal cord is a whole lot, a lot of other issues involved. Here you've got questions of anatomy. Okay. In other words, I just told you the skin will heal if the doctor brings the skin and holds the skin together. Right. 
if you don't suture or staple that skin properly, the skin can't heal properly, and you'll never form a nice, uh, seamless, uh, uh, healed wound. Okay. You understand? Okay, I mean, yeah. the anatomical problem. But there's a whole lot of other issues. This is not the panacea for all ills. It's not the sort of solution to all medical problems and all diseases or anything like that at all. What it is is this. The emphasis now must be we understand that we fundamentally remain healthy because nature physiologically prepares us to maintain our health. And so nature has provided us with an immune system uh, and so on. And in particular, it has this renewal system. And that's what my book is all about, that we have the stem cells that are leaving the bone marrow, going out into the circulation, into the tissues to renew the body, rejuvenate the body, restore the body. And as a result, we now have a fundamentally different paradigm to wellness. We used to think that the best way to stay healthy and well is to feed the cells. So everything was on giving the cells what they need, right. and vitamins and minerals and right. fatty acids and so on. Right. That's good. That's very good. But that's only supplying the existing troops. Sooner or later, those, those troops are going to suffer and die. Okay. We need new troops to replace them. That's where the stem cells come in. And how do we and they, feed them? They come, that's exactly. They come from the bone marrow. So the, but they are held in the bone marrow by an adhesive. We call it L-selectin. I don't want to become too technical, but L-selectin is the adhesive that holds the stem cells in the bone marrow. If we could find a way to block L-selectin, in other words, to interrupt the adhesive action, uh-huh. more of the stem cells will come out. More stem cells come out, more in the circulation, more go to the tissues, more the, uh, available to rejuvenate the body and restore the body. So the idea is to use nutritional intervention to increase the concentration or the level or the population of stem cells in your circulation. Okay. Uh, now, now can, can I put you on hold just for a second? Now, how do, sure, so, so let's say I do something to cause that to happen. What benefit do I get? Do I become younger? Do I become more energetic? Do I, okay. do, do I repair things that couldn't get repaired before? Well, everything happens. That's the whole thing about nature. When nature heals, nature does everything. When you eat a banana, you don't have to tell the banana to go to do this. Banana do do everything that you want to get done. (laughs) And in the sense that cells restore damaged tissues, injured cells, worn out cells, disease cells, all the possibilities become uh, uh, significant. So as a result, by increasing... The, the, the concentration of stem cells in the circulation, we see a remarkable change in almost every area of health and wellness. That's the whole thing. It's a universal uh, effect in that it can affect anything and everything in the body because it goes fundamentally to produce brand new healthy tissue cells where they're previously damaged and worn out and so on. So can you also help patients that have uh, dementia onsetting to help them restore their memory? Well, we don't know all the details of that. What we do know is that some, we now know that stem cells reproduce nerve cells. That's a very important uh, understanding. When I was in medical school 30 years ago, we didn't believe that. We didn't believe that you could replace nerve cells. But oh. today we understand, yes, we can actually see them light up. We can actually put the stem cells in the human body with a little fluorescent tag on it and follow this fluorescent tag as they go through the body and literally watch them go into the brain and, and light up in the brain. Wow. So we know we can reproduce stem, uh, nerve cells. Because we can reproduce nerve cells, both in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and so on, because we can make nerves from stem cells, a lot of neurological disorders become susceptible to this type of stem cell intervention. But again, don't go down the medical route. You see, you're, you're thinking still in the medical model. You've got a patient. You've got somebody with dementia. You're thinking you know, of doing a, some type of drug intervention, some right. type of doctor input. Don't think of that. Think of a person who every day has a brain, and every day that brain is constantly needing to be rejuvenated. That's where nutrition comes in. That's where the normal, natural, biological intervention comes in. So every day I can take certain specific substances that block the L-selectin, increase my stem cells in circulation, and every day I can get the benefit of having a higher level of stem cells circulating in my body doing what they do best. So what has changed in you since doing that? Well, I'm a healthy guy, thank God. I'm not <laughs> the you never be, I'm 65. But what I can tell you is that you are thinking, see, again, you're thinking of change. That's the medical model. Find the guy who can't walk and make him walk. Find the guy who can't see and make him see. That's not, that's the medical model. That's stem cell medicine. Right. It's like asking me, what has changed since I eat, since I had my breakfast? 
I feel good. That's good. But what else has changed? <laughs> well, I had my breakfast. I okay. Had breakfast. But then I had breakfast yesterday and the day before the for years and years, years I'll be having breakfast. Okay. So, but, but I'm doing it basically because I understand that my body retains its state of health and wellness by taking advantage of this normal physiological renewal system whereby my stem cells go on to replace and, rep uh, and repair and, and rejuvenate my tissue cells throughout the body. So are you, able, are, are, you, are you able to defend yourself against diseases better because of that? Of course. Oh, that's essential. You okay. know, I mean, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's par excellence. <laughs> but we also repair. We not only, you know, in a sense, uh, uh, prevent, but we also repair because, as I told you, the stem cells can literally go to damaged tissues. Today, for example, today I'm going to be outside and going to be exposed to all kinds of challenges, whether there be inflammation because of exercise and work, whether it be because of, um, oh, you know, using my brain a lot, and so I damage some uh, neurons in my brain, whether I get a, a cut or whether I get exposed to bugs, or whatever it is that I'm exposed to today. Right, right. Today, as my cells get damaged and need help, my stem cells in my bloodstream are going to go to those very areas where that help is needed today and literally engage in the process of renewal and restoration and rejuvenation. Okay. So how so many stem cells I have become so important, and that's where nutrition is, because I can eat organic substances that I know do that, proven and patented to do that. Okay. Uh, Dr. Alan C. Summersfall is our guest, and Dr. We are all ears. We're listening to every word you're saying. The, the book is called The Amazing Power of Stem Cell Nutrition. We've got like four minutes left. In the book, you talk about uh, well, you, uh, like algae or A, what was it called? A. Well, yes, I've got, I've got to tell you about these, the, the organic substances that you need to eat. Okay. Al the algae, which comes, uh, there's a particular algae called AFA that stands for a long medical name. Don't worry, it's algae. And this particular algae, found especially up in the Northwest uh, in abundance, but it's harvested under specific conditions and all that stuff and, 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 and concentrate and all that stuff, but it can be put into capsular form. That's one thing, algae. Second thing is a thing called, uh, again, long names, uh, Ontario pinatifida, but that's a long name for seaweed that contains a thing called fucoidin, another organic substance, safe, biologically safe. And a third one is a Chinese herb or mushroom uh, known sometimes as forty polygonum multiforum, not a long name, but forget the long names. These are organic substances, and the blend of them gives you the best effect. It gives you a larger effect for a longer period of time throughout the day. And they put it into a concentrated capsule. You can just simply use this, and it's been shown, published, patented, and, and, and proven that it can literally increase your normal stem cell in circulation up to about 30%. Typically on a normal, regular use, 30% more stem cells going in your body increase your prognosis for a healthy, happy life. Okay. And all this information is on my website, stemcellnutrition.com. Okay, that's where we need to, to take this interview. In other words, we're going to run out of time. For the listeners who are fascinated with this, I have a copy of Dr. Summersall's book. I will give this one away. If you call me right now and you're the first one to get through, the number is 622-9622. I'll give it away, and then I'm going to ask Dr. Summersall to slowly tell me the, the website again. <laughs> good, good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Thank you. It's Lewis. Lewis, and you know where Lewis. we are, right? At the Paddock Mall? Yes, I do. Okay, Lewis, it'll be waiting for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Th All right. Thank you. All right, we, we are so fascinated with this subject, uh, Doctor. Uh, slowly, please tell us the website again. StemCellNutrition.com. Okay, StemCellNutrition.com. And is the book online? Is the book available through the website? Yes, it's on Amazon. Yes, get on Amazon. You get on StemCellNutrition.com. They'll give you a link, yes. Okay, okay. Um, well, gosh. There's lots more to this, but the truth is that nature is better than science. Food is better than medicine. You understand? So the normal, natural, physiological process, that's the way to go. Just like how everybody gets up and eats today, and only a few people in hospital really need the medical-type intervention. Everybody needs the normal physiological intervention, which is to simply eat organic substances and let the body benefit. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me, but I don't know where I would have got algae and seaweed from. Well, yeah. see, I, <laughs> yeah. I will yeah. read the book or because you'll, you'll, then, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. You know, that's the funny thing, you know. A lot of the drugs we get come from nature. Nobody worries about the source of the drugs. But when foods come from nature, everybody's worried about the foods. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Uh, well, you are a great guest. Thank you so much for being on the air. And for the listeners, I have recorded this. We will put this up as a podcast on YouTube and on the WOCA Facebook page. And you can share it and, uh, and, and listen to it again and get what Dr. Summersall is saying. 
Boy, you gave us a lot of information in a short time. Doctor, thank you so Stem much. StemCellNutrition.com. StemCellNutrition.com. That's the, it. There you go. Get all the information. <laughs> StemCellNutrition.com. Uh, Dr. Somersault, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Real pleasure. We'll do it again. What a great interview. All right, we'll take a little break and be right back. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joe, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The Army says it will not look away from misconduct allegations in the case of former Taliban.